Let's Talk 351814. Before we continue though, this episode of Let's Talk was sponsored by my friend Ivan. He gave me $20 for food on Wednesday at the sub shop and it was the best sub I probably ever had. Getting back to it though, called Abandoned Cat Girlfriend, it's from the artist Danimaru. Not a lot of tags to go off of for this one, but let's get right into it. The dojo starts out with a snowy overlook of a town, with someone talking about how cold it is. This someone is walking through the snow, complaining about the cold and how hungry he is, which leads to him visiting a convenience store to buy dinner, which is where he sees her. The her in question is picking up some bread and putting it in her school bag, which he spots and rushes over to whisper at her to put it back. She pauses before breaking out crying, saying she's sorry. He tells her that he's not trying to accuse her of anything, but it's now awkward because people are looking, so he says they should go outside. They're outside now, surprised, but he hands her his handkerchief to help her calm down and clean up, but she's just completely blank faced. He's confused, but questions her about why she was trying to shoplift and how it would cause trouble for her parents. She tells him that she doesn't care about them and it has nothing to do with them. It looks like she has a really rough home life and wearing so little in the middle of the night. He takes his jacket and puts it around her, saying it's cold out so they should go back to his place because he can sense she doesn't want to go home and it would be a pain for her to stay at the convenience store all night, which they go. He gives her some coffee, asking her some more questions about why she was trying to shoplift. She responds by saying it was to piss off her mom because when she was little, she remarried and had another kid. After that, she was always in the way and spent her whole life being ignored by her family. Even that day when she went home, her mother wouldn't let her in. It's happened countless times and she finally realized that she doesn't care how much her mom hates her. She just wants a home where she can go back to whenever she wants. He offers up his place whenever she's in trouble, but of course she thinks that she's got to do weird stuff in exchange for it. But that's not really the case because whenever he looks at her, he thinks of a poor abandoned cat. She's upset by this for some reason and then does the stereotypical look down laughing to herself thing. She then introduces herself as Haizuka Ryo, and he introduces himself as Igarashi Shuji. Now that introductions are out of the way, she says that she may not be a cute cat, but hopes he'll take care of her. And from that day on, whenever Ryo couldn't go home, she went to his place. She still has an attitude, but he gets a sense of peace of mind whenever he sees her smile. Ryo's parents never took her anywhere, so when they would go out, he got the privilege of seeing her first reactions to a bunch of different things, like conveyor belt sushi and steak sushi. Which is funny for him because he's only seen elementary schoolers get excited over it. His once barren apartment became much livelier with Ryo around, to the point where he doesn't know if it's his or hers, but that's better than before. And before he knew it, he was doing everything he could to see that smile. And one day, he's coming home from a sudden business trip and hasn't been home in a bit. He got home at 1am, in the middle of the night, and at the doorstep of his apartment was Ryo, shivering in the cold. She sees him and jumps up to hug him, because she thought he wasn't gonna come home. She's freezing because she was out there the whole time, yesterday and the day before. Her mom locked her out and she wanted to see him. So they hurry inside to warm her up. After a bit, the two are sitting on the bed. She tells them that she's sorry for panicking like that because even though he was gone for a few days, she got scared. Her heart wouldn't stop pounding when she couldn't open his door. She couldn't help but feel like she was a nuisance and didn't want to believe that. So she waited for him to come home. He apologizes for not telling her that he was leaving, but she grabs his face and kisses him, confessing her feelings for him. Whenever she's with him, her heart feels warm and cozy, but also races because she likes him and wants to stay with him forever. He feels the same way and says he loves her as well, which makes her happy. And they just go straight to doing it. They finish up and it cuts to them at the mall, shopping. He's buying her a bunch of stuff like a cell phone so there won't be a repeat of last time. They're still walking around and he asks her if there's anything else she wants, which is when something catches her eye. She drags him along and points towards it. It's a wedding dress, saying that she would like to try one of these on and the doesn't end. Overall, if I could rate this higher, it would be a 12 out of 10. I absolutely love this story and love the characters. The art style is absolutely immaculate and incredibly adorable. I recommend you check it out for yourselves as always. Again, big thanks to Ivan for that sandwich. His Instagram will be linked below. That's all I got. I'll see you in the next one. Attack on Titan, Tokyo Ghoul. These hentai babes make me drool. Hasune Biku is great. She makes me masturbate. Fairy tale.